x plus 2. Alright, so remember we want to multiply x plus 2 by our other polynomial and end up getting 3x to the fourth minus 5x squared minus 3x plus 3. And it's also important to note that we have 0 x cubed. Remember this is a squared this is a fourth power, so we need to make sure that we remember there are no x cubes here, or zero of them. But important to think about that when I take my x plus 2 factor and I multiply it by my quotient, whatever I get from my division, I need to end up with 3x to the fourth. So let's think about this first term. Where am I going to get 3x to the fourth from? Well, if we consider what's going to give us our biggest power, it's going to be whatever x times the biggest power in our quotient is. So, let's just think about that first. What should that biggest power be? Well, the question you want to ask yourself is, x times what will give me 3x to the fourth? In other words, how many times does x go into 3x to the fourth? And the answer would be 3x cubed, because 3x cubed times x is going to give me 3x to the fourth power. And we also need to think about what 3x cubed times 2 is going to be, because remember, the distributive property tells me that this whole thing will be multiplied by each piece of my polynomial. So that's going to give me 6x cubed. Important to remember that that is cubed. And now what we want to do is we want to subtract away this whole piece because we want to know what's going to be left over that I'm going to need to end up getting when I multiply my polynomial by x plus 2. So I subtract. And remember, I'm subtracting this whole thing. So that means I'm going to subtract 3x to the 4th minus 3x to the 4th. Those will cancel. I have 0x cubed minus 6x cubed. So I'm going to end up with negative 6x cubed. And then everything else doesn't have anything to deal with, uh, with in my um, first iteration. So I'm going to end up with negative 5x squared minus 3x plus 3. And what is this? Well, this is what I'm going to have to deal with after I've gotten my 3x cubed out of the way. Right? I've multiplied 3x cubed by x. That's going to get me my 3x to the fourth. And now I've got to figure out, okay, what am I going to multiply x plus 2 by to get whatever's left over? Because that's what I'm going to need in order to complete the rest of my polynomial. Okay? So let's go ahead and, and continue. If I need to end up getting this, I want to know how many times will x go into my leading term, because that's the first term I need to take care of, and I want to slowly whittle my way down until I'm done with all of my terms. So x will go into negative 6x cubed, exactly negative 6x squared times. And then I just go ahead and say, okay, what will negative 6x squared times x plus 2 give me? Well, it's going to give me negative 6x cubed minus 12x squared. Subtracting everything will make this, both of those, plus signs, which is going to cancel my 6x cubed and give me 7 x squared minus 3x plus 3. Continue the iteration. x will go into 7x squared exactly 7x times, which is going to give me 7x squared plus 14x. I subtract again. My 7x squareds will cancel. I will end up with negative 17x plus 3. Almost there. 
negative 17 is my final piece. That's going to cancel my 17x. So I'm going to get negative 17x minus 34. So when I subtract everything, my 17x's will cancel, and I'm going to be left with a remainder of 37. So what does that mean? Well, back in the context of our division algorithm, remember, we're looking for some polynomial that we can multiply by x plus 2 to get our original polynomial. Well, what I want you to do is think right now to yourself, what will happen if I multiply x plus 2 times my quotient? Hopefully, what you've decided is that, you know what, I'm going to get very close to my original polynomial, but I'm going to end up needing 37 more. I'm going to be a little, little short. All right? I'm going to get there, but there's going to be a remainder of 37. I've got to figure out a way to get that 37 back. So let's go ahead and just imagine what that, that means here. I'm going to call this original polynomial P of X. And I'm going to call this polynomial up here our quotient, or Q of X, to make it a little easier. Okay, so let's think about what we have so far. We have p of x is going to be equal to x plus 2 times what? Well, we know it's times q of x, but that's not quite it, right? We need to end up getting 37, right? We need this extra 37. So what else do I want to multiply x plus 2 by? Well, it's got to be something that gives me 37. So in the back of our minds, let's think about x plus 2 times what is going to give me 37? Well, it's simple. It's got to be 37 over x plus 2. Because when I multiply, I'm going to cancel, and I'm going to end up with 37. So what is it that I want to multiply x plus 2 by? 37 over x plus 2. And now we can see, guess what? If I multiply x plus 2 by my quotient polynomial right here, and then by 37 over x plus 2, I'm going to get exactly my original polynomial. Now the last thing that we want to think about is why does this mean that x plus 2 is not a factor. Well, x plus 2 could only be a factor if it goes in evenly, right? That's what it means to be a factor. 2 is a factor. 8, because it goes in evenly, 3 is not. But more importantly, x plus 2 not being a factor means that negative 2 is not a root. What does that mean? I want you to think carefully to yourself. What does it mean to say that negative 2 is not a root? What it means is that if I were to plug in negative 2, even though this would go to 0, I would still end up with some number, right? If I plug in negative 2 into my polynomial, I'm not going to end up with 0. And we want to kind of see why that is. Well, there's one way to test it. You could plug in negative 2 into your original polynomial and see, do you get a root? Do you get 0? But another way to think about it is this. If I'm going to multiply through in my polynomial here, okay, I'm going to take x plus 2 and I'm going to multiply it by everything. Okay? So first I multiply it by x plus 2. Now, if you look at our polynomial here, right, I've got a lot of, of terms. I'm going to multiply x plus 2 by all those terms. Let's just not worry about that. Okay, let's just assume that there's going to be, it's going to be some function of, of x. Right? So I'm going to have a bunch of things with, with x in it. Well, in fact, I can think about it being x plus 2 times each one of these pieces. Right? So I'm going to have x plus 2 times this, x plus 2 times this, 
x plus 2 times this, x plus 2 times negative 17. And then at the very end, I'm going to take x plus 2, and I'm going to multiply it by 37 over x plus 2. Well, what happens when I multiply x plus 2 by 37 over x plus 2? I end up with just 37. So even though x plus 2 multiplied by each of these different pieces is going to work out for me and make everything go to 0, I'm still going to be left with 37. I want to illustrate again what that means. So if I want to test, I want to see why it means that why negative 2 can't be a root here. If I multiply through, I'm going to have x plus 2 times this first piece, 3x squared, minus, and then I'm going to have another x plus 2, I'm just going to use those parentheses for convenience sake, times negative 6x squared, plus, and I have another x plus 2 times 7x. I'm going to continue down below now. Then I'm going to have another x plus 2 times negative 17. And I made a little error here. If you note up top, this should be plus, And then the negative 6 takes care of the negative. And then at the very end, I have x plus 2 times 37 over x plus 2. But that just gives me 37. So now, imagine if you plugged in negative 2. Well, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So this would be 0, this would be 0, this would be 0, and this would be 0. They would all end up being 0. Because 0 times anything is 0. And what will I be left with? 37. So it's important to note that since x plus 2 is not a factor, it's also not going to reveal a root. Negative 2 will not be a root because if I were to plug it in, I would get 37. And you could test that by plugging in negative 2 into our original polynomial and seeing that it does not work. All right, hopefully I didn't confuse you too much more. Hopefully this helped a little bit, and we'll see you guys soon.